Hey, 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 everybody. Uh, welcome, Crystal DeSantis, to the Cave-In Universe. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm doing well. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, you're in Texas, correct? I am. It's, oh, okay. I'm yeah, in so Austin. are we. So, yeah, yeah just getting... Uh, just huh. trying to figure out where this fall weather is. I know. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> it's fall already, apparently, but... Oh man, yeah. it's cool, cooling down. So you are a licensed marriage and family therapist. Um, of course, passionate about modern relationships and uh, mm-hmm. men's mental health. Um, you mm-hmm. your book, Strong: A Relationship Field Guide for the Modern Man, is available now. Um, I hope I said all that correctly. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, but did you want to? Yeah, just start going a little bit uh, more about your book. And of course, um, I was reading some of it uh, myself, and it is b- very uh, great read uh, for everyone to check out, especially modern guys like you know me and yeah, you. Uh, you know our listeners um so yeah if you could just uh you know you want to start a little more about that and how you your background and how you got into that yeah so i became a marriage and family therapist um started with my own journey i met my husband on a dating app um like probably a lot of people do and i realized after going out with him i was like oh i really like him but i actually realized now that i caught the one that I want, I don't know how to keep him. I don't know how to do a healthy relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I went to therapy. I started looking around like, who can help me? Like, I want to keep this one. I want to have a healthy relationship. But I grew up in a family. Um, my parents, they're lovely individuals, but they didn't have a very good relationship with each other. So I didn't really learn um, how to have good relationships. So I went, found a therapist, found a marriage and family therapist, did my work, learned a lot, and then realized like, oh, I want to keep learning. So I kept learning and then I got a degree and here I am. And then I wrote a book so I can share. That's really impressive. Yeah, that just proves like that you, you know, you put yourself out there and you, um, you know, you look into stuff like this and it actually kind of drives you to want to, you know, like you said, you want to learn more about it. So that's really inspiring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because that's definitely, yeah, it means that you, or another reason to be passionate about it is like you literally dealt with it yourself. So you know what it's like Um, in the process of like writing a book, like what's that process? Like, is it, is it difficult? I mean, I'm sure there's lots of, Oh my gosh. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And you know, I guess part of the reason why I wanted to write a book is because, you know, I found relationships, especially, you know, before I met my husband, just very confusing. Right. It's like there's a lot of noise out there. There are a lot of people in your ear telling you this or that. There's, you know, um, and so that's part of what I realized, like, gosh, I just don't even know what to do. Um, And I have this guy and I don't want to waste any time. And so that's part of where, you know, I'm so glad that I lucked into, honestly, because it was my first time really in, you know, therapy as an adult. And I lucked into this amazing therapist. So, you know, I know finding a therapist is tough. Not a lot of people have access to it. Um, You know, and and so that's part of why I really was passionate about writing this book is, you know, the more knowledge that's out there and the more accessibility there is about communication skills, relationship skills, um, the better off most people will be. Um, And so that was why I'm also so passionate about it. I was like, look, I knew nothing. And I, I got to where I am now. And yes, writing a book was very, very hard, <laughs> partially because I wanted to do it justice. Like I really wanted to make sure everything I put in there was research-based, it was applicable, right. um, but it was also like immediately practical in your relationship. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's that's true. And um, like, well, like you even said in your book, like, you know, you're not a man, so you don't know how to be a man, but you, I mean, I'm sure you have a lot of, like you said, research, and, um, you know, mm-hmm. experience through that, um, which I found very interesting. Um, like um, when you talk about like the modern man and like the modern man's role in relationships today, um, mm-hmm. you know, like you say, it's not like the old days of the three P's necessarily anymore, even though I would say it still is a little coming from a guy. It still is. But maybe it, I, I agree and see where you're saying, um, you know, when it comes to the provider, the protector and the procreator. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, what is your view on like that and like today's toxic masculinity? Cause I can agree too. There are things from, I guess, guys of the past that I can, you know, like the, we don't really have to do that. Like, you know, the, Oh, suck it up pussy. Like, you know, things like that. Like, yeah, maybe like things like that. Like, Oh, you're crying. Mm -hmm. Like dudes don't cry. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't agree with things like that. Um, but Mm -hmm. yeah, what's your view with toxic masculinity? Um, 
Well, yeah. So I mean, I really wanted to say, and I'm glad you you got that. Like, I'm not a man, but I am somebody who loves a man, and I am somebody who works with a lot of men, right? And so this was kind of the common theme of men, like you said. I want to be a protector. I want to be a provider, but she doesn't want that from me. And so now we're fighting about this, where she's like, you know, what are you trying to do here? Um, and that was also my own thing of, you know, part of the reason I, I didn't meet my husband until I was 26. And so I was just like, you know what, I can protect myself, I can provide for myself, I'm not planning on getting pregnant. So what do I need a man for? Right. You know, and so I think that's part of what I talk about the modern relationship It's like, well, when we don't depend on each other anymore for like, like women needed a man to, you know, I don't know, help get by in society. Right how are these roles evolving now? Like, what does it mean for a man to be a protector now in his relationship? Is it just being the biggest, strongest guy or is there emotional protection, right? right? And same thing, providing, is it just about a paycheck or is it about, you know, what else? You're bringing presence, you're bringing fun, you're bringing wisdom, you're bringing emotional regulation. Like what else yeah. are you providing? Um, right. And so that's really what I saw is like the evolution of this conversation of like what, you know, what do we need each other for? Because we always do, right? We are humans, we're made to be in community, but what do these skills look like when it comes to a modern relationship? Right. right. And that's yeah. kind of like along the lines of like how some a lot of women like I, I, you hear the word love language be thrown out there a lot because yeah. everybody mm -hmm. has their own. So really, I think that's what it is, is just finding somebody that, you know, like I would say my love language is, you know, um, um, uh, emotional, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like I, in confirmation and I want to be, you know, told these things and, and so and so. So it's like something like that. Like I can understand where if another mm -hmm. woman needs that, you know, they will find that too. Yeah. And my love language is more physical. I right. would say like, I, you know, hugging and mm -hmm. that reassurance through that way, which I have dealt with relationships mm -hmm. where, you know, it wasn't a match, you know, maybe you're with someone that I'm a very physical person, but the other person isn't and doesn't really like to be touched much and hugged and all that. So it's like, you know, there are some, mm -hmm. yeah, you got to find your match in that way. So, yes. yeah. you know, <laughs> And speaking of touch, I wanted to kind of, you know, uh, get into more of like, you know, you are uh, in, in sex ther ther therapy also. Um, mm -hmm. So just a little bit more about that and what you do. Yeah, I think that's actually kind of a, a nice segue is, you know, the a lot of what I deal with in sex therapy is desire discrepancy, right? So one partner, maybe they feel loved a lot or they have a higher libido. Um, and so they are looking for more sex and the other partner, maybe they have a lower libido or maybe that's not their primary love language. And so this becomes a conflict, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that can be something also of like, you know, with any couple, you're not gonna find, you, and I know maybe this is like coming from a marriage therapist, but you're not gonna find your perfect match you're gonna find someone who you can build a life with and together you're gonna to build those bridges of connection, those bridges of intimacy. Like the most important thing, your perfect match is not some magical unicorn that like, oh my God, you complete me. But it's gonna be that person that has your back that you can trust to build a life with you. Mm -hmm. And that's really that skill of like, you know, you're gonna have two different libidos, you're gonna have two different desires, you're gonna have two different love languages, but do you care enough to build a life together so that you're willing to be flexible, you're willing to be open, meet their needs, you're willing to work together or not, right? And that's really like what it comes down to is what is a fulfilling sex life? Like, are you open to hearing about what your partner needs? Are you open to making it more pleasurable for them? Are you open to, you know, doing something that it brings you closer together right. rather than just, well, that's just how I am. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I said, in the past, you have known relationships like that and uh, that, yeah, that may be the case for a lot of people though. So like what advice would you give someone in that spot? Um, luckily not us, but you know, and yeah. what, what advice would you give someone in that spot that maybe they are with somebody, you know, doesn't, you know, could be either, you know, doesn't matter the gender of each, but just with mm -hmm. somebody that they maybe have that high libido and they're, you know, or maybe more of a physical lover and they're just not getting that from the other person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think one thing that's super important to name is that, you know, physical touch is not just sex, mm -hmm. right? And so that's something else is, you know, are we making it safe to have physical touch without it feeling pressured to escalate to sex? Right. 
right? So that can be really important as well is like, are we making room for sensual touch? Like when's the last time you rubbed each other's head or gave each other a sensual massage or took a nice bath together? Like there's intimate sensual experiences that can meet that need for feeling really deeply connected. And it doesn't just have to be about like a race to orgasm. Right, right, right yeah. And, and that's often where I see people get disconnected, where it becomes this like performance, like I got to perform, I got to reach the goal, I got to, you know, and it, then it just doesn't become pleasurable. Yeah, right? and it kind of becomes where it's just like, that. yeah, that that's the task. And like after it's yeah. just like, okay, here we go our separate ways again. And that that's not good either. Like that doesn't exactly. feel good either, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So honestly, a lot of sex therapy is bringing back the focus on pleasure and connection. Mm -hmm. in whatever sexual experience there is, right. right? It's like, what is the point of this? Is it both of you getting pleasure? Is it one person giving another person pleasure with, you know, that's the agreement? Mm -hmm. Or like, what can we, what can we work on here so that you're both feeling like pleasure is at the center of this experience? Not, oh God, I just need to check this box or, oh, uh, you know, like yeah. we haven't connected. Here's a quick shortcut to connection. So we don't have to have the conversation that we've been avoiding, right? So sex right. can be used in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, I mean, I, I really enjoy this part of the work. It's like, gosh, sex can be so um, rich and deep right. and people, but also people can use it for a lot of different things um, to cover up maybe some more emotional or deeper yeah, conversations. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. 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 There's that too. Um, so I know you mentioned you work with a lot of men. Do you also work with like, um, like a lot of couples too? Like, do you have like, mm -hmm. you know, of course, men and women that want to work together on some things or is yeah. it the majority of just men trying to figure out, you know, what they're doing wrong? Um, no, I, I would say it's, it's both like, uh, you know, my, I'm a marriage and family therapist. So primarily I started working with couples. Um, but then what I found in the field was that there are a lot of therapists that wanted to work with women and focus on women's issues. And so there just wasn't the same amount of therapists that were open to working with men. Mm -hmm. So by default, I was like, well, you know, I would like to work with more men. I enjoy working with men. I think they're great. A lot of these men, like they come in, they have the desire, they just don't know what to do. Right. Um, and yeah, so like, guidance. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for that, right? And I yeah. wanna uh, provide a space for that. And so, yeah, couples, and then that's where also my specialty of working with men. I also have trauma specialization and I, I'm passionate about working with first responders and veterans, which just often tend to be majority men. Oh, um, right. right. And, and you um, yeah. like, do you deal with like men, men to um, struggling to find relationships and like trying to um, maybe like single men that are trying to get out there? Um, what, yeah. Like, what struggles do you tend to see with that? Because, yeah, I haven't been single. I've been single I, like seven years. So I see I wouldn't know anything about that. So like what is like mm -hmm. the modern guy going through now? Of course, you know, dating apps are still out there and, and things like yeah. that. But yeah, I, like, what do you notice? Honestly, I think that's part of where the transition is for, you know, the modern man is kind of like what you said earlier of, you know, sometimes the message for young men has been like, get a good job, make a lot of money, then you can get whatever girl you want, right? right? But yeah. then they are like, but then I met a girl that only wanted me for my money and didn't treat me like a person. Yeah. And then you're like, ah, see? And so... I think that's part of what I like working with those men that are single that are like, you know what, I've been in this, but I don't want to find that kind of woman anymore. Or maybe like my career is not my priority. I do want to have a family. How do I attract a high quality woman if I don't make six figures? Right. Right. And so really kind of working on these skills of what else can you do to prove that you are a protector if that's what you want to be as a man? Right. How can you show up as a protector? Maybe then work on your self-awareness. You're very stable. You're very emotionally aware. You're very expressive. You help her feel, you know, emotionally safe. Right. And that's what's attractive because maybe she has her own job. Right. Right. Exactly. And then provider. Right. So yeah. Uh, yeah. all of those things working on that. And what do you think, too, is and I, I've been meaning to say this, but sorry if we're looking like this way because our camera's right here, but you're right here on the screen. <laughs> okay. A little disclaimer. But anyway, uh, do, you, do you think that like in modern like modern times, <clears throat> kind of to flip it from men to women, do you mm -hmm. think it's hard for men nowadays, too, because women now kind of 
you know, they can provide for themselves and protect mm -hmm. themselves and all that, but they also kind of tend to expect a little much, especially now it's, you know, the age of social media and everything and seeing mm -hmm. what's out there and seeing other relationships on TikTok. And, mm -hmm. you know, you know, it's kind of like back then we used to call it like, you know, the Disney fairy tale fantasy. Well, that's kind of in a way gone, but in another way amplified, amplified in real life because, you know, you're seeing other relationships live on, you know, mm -hmm. out, and you kind of want that. And then you tend to pass up guys that maybe, you know, don't fit those check. Mm -hmm. You know, don't don't check those boxes. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I hope I'm making sense. Yeah. No, I hear, I totally. <laughs> I no, I hear you absolutely, and I think this is a problem, um, because you know, uh, social media is not real life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But also, I think that can be a good litmus test or a good like you know gut check of like if so if somebody is more invested in how their relationship looks on social media then that, pro that person is probably not emotionally mature enough to be in an adult relationship. Okay, very true. Yeah. Very true. You know? <laughs> well said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very well said. Um, yeah. So because of all these things that, you know, these men are uh, worried about not checking these boxes, I assume that probably puts a toll on, like, a men's mental health. What would you mm -hmm. say are, like, your insights on, like, the importance mm. of men's mental health? Because I, even me, like, you know, as a woman, I can even see that, you know, men's mental health sometimes isn't taken serious and it should be. Oh, yeah. Uh, so just curious, like, what your insights are to that. Yeah. yeah. And that's really where I, I recognize my limitations as a, as a woman in this field is that's where I think men need men's support groups. Right. That's where men need community and support from other men and older men that are mentors, because that is a big thing, especially with a lot of modern men is, you know, our the grandfathers and the fathers were raised in a different generation, in a different mm -hmm. world. And yeah. so, you know, having having a group of mentors um, that can give you insight what it's like to be a man in today's world. So mm -hmm. Maybe men that are just slightly older, but they have the relationships that you're looking for. So that's really where I'm at. Yes, men's mental health is so crucially connected to having a community of supportive right. other men. Yes. Yeah. That, that, that's really important. And, you know, even for guys who are like myself, you know, I struggle a lot with my mental health. Um, you know, I lost my mom in 2020 and I was really mm -hmm. close to her. And so, uh, you know, that kind of started a whole downward, downward spiral of mental health that I was already mm -hmm. dealing with. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, even just one having just one person, because I'm an introvert myself, and I don't like mm -hmm. to have, you know, be in large groups or have a lot of friends, but even just that one person uh, mm -hmm. to reach out to, you know, I always have my guy, you know, yeah. so uh, that that's very important. And like you said, just if we can get older mentors, too, because that's that's a lot of the issues, too, is what those older generations have been through and know mm -hmm. and just like, oh, you guys don't have it so bad. Like it's, it's, it's like, no, you don't understand. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, you're not working 12 hours a day. It's like, you know, there's, there's, there's mod, just like with everything that becomes modern, there's modern issues. And Absolutely. Um, yeah. So yeah, having those older mentors would be, yeah, mm -hmm. important. And, yeah. Uh, you know, it depends on your area too. Cause like if you're in a city that may be easier to find, I'm not really sure, mm -hmm. but like, but you know we live in a rural area we're 45 minutes in the uh, outside of austin in the country and um mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of just older i guess depending on your area, there's a lot of older guys that have different viewpoints of society so that can yeah. be an issue where that can absolutely be hard. Yeah. yeah and i'm 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 really sorry to hear about your mom i know this is like you know uh it's, yeah it's, it's, the yeah. grief yes it's yeah. still yeah every day they say mm -hmm. um you know you're always looking for like, when am, when am I going to get over it? When am I going to get over it? And then you just never do. You just become numb, yeah. you know, and yeah. it, it, at any moment it could just pop out and I could just, mm. you know, just ball yeah. into tears like I want to right now. But anyway, <laughs> well, I'm, See, yeah. that's, a, that's a good uh, segue. Yeah. To the other thing is men bottling their emotions, which is why yeah. I'm not asking for, mm -hmm. you know, you know, mm -hmm. their here, but you know, just like, how, how would you, how would you advise someone to, control those emotions that just bottle up and bottle up and then they just it just explodes literally yeah and i guess that's the thing right it's like i you know men need safe spaces to express that emotion and it doesn't always have to be in their romantic relationship right, right? so having that person that you can call and be like man i'm just having a day mm -hmm. like the grief is big today yeah. you know and having a buddy who can just hear that and validate and normalize like hey this is a totally this is not a strange phone call this is just this is a good phone call 
I like hearing this from you. Thank you for calling me and telling me this because I'm here for you, right? And especially with grief, I mean, this is one of the f things I like to, you know, I heard and then I like to use is, you know, it's just all the love that doesn't have anywhere to go, right? right? Yeah, and so just honoring that of like, you know, I'm just feeling a big wave of love today and I miss having that outlet of where I used to send it. So I'm gonna call my friend and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hear, you know, the validation that like, you know, that's beautiful, man, thanks for calling. And, you know, I, I appreciate you sharing that love with me, yeah. right? And just that is really what we need for men. And this is where like online groups as well for men um, has filled a little bit of that gap of you know yeah like you don't maybe you go talk to your neighbor you're like hey man and you know he's from a different generation from a different universe and he right. has literally. you know and that's yeah, yeah, almost seems yeah. like that from a different universe like we weren't even on the same planet yeah. at, at one point yeah. so that's really where i've seen also men be hurt a lot by that experience of like yeah i tried to open up and then i got kind of punched back into place and yeah i'm not doing that again yeah, yeah. um so I'm, and, but I'm really grateful that there are lots of men out there that are changing the conversation, you know, like this, yes. having more openness, honesty, normalizing, um, and being leaders for other men, because, you know, that's really so important to change the conversation around men's mental health. Right, yeah. Right, right. <clears throat> wow, that's great. That's, uh, yeah, like you're just your, your insights, you just seem so knowledgeable in all of this. And yeah, it's just really, it's really good. It's inspiring yeah for all men you know to hear and you know you know maybe endure like you know some sort of you know therapy if they feel they need it or you know somebody who mm -hmm. just didn't know hey you know somebody who probably just listened to this and thought of somebody that they could call you know i never thought exactly. that. that's what i was listening mm -hmm. to that. um, but that's what i was gonna say is um you know if i feel relieved uh, from from hearing that um i hope yeah other men watching yes. uh, and especially dealing with their own issues um, can hear that and just yeah just reach out to somebody um mm -hmm. there's always there's always there's somebody that cares yeah. I, I guarantee you there's yes there. even if you think nobody's there for you and nobody cares for you there's somebody there mm -hmm. Trust absolutely me. yeah and that is something that i actually see a lot is like men allowing themselves to be on the receiving end of care and having the experience of being cared for right is going to be so healing Wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And this is where I think women and, you know, intimate partners come into play as well. It's like, you know, not just being cared for of like, hey, I made you a sandwich. Hey, I, you know, <laughs> packed your lunch. Right. Um, but I really care about you. I care about your health. I care about your experience. Yes. Um, and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm here for you. Right. I care about you. I'm not just here to care for you. Like the old checkbox, like, where's my dinner? Where's yes. my laundry? Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. And even even like with kids, like something we're dealing with, um, you know, that we, we have a daughter, um, mm -hmm. you know, just she's what, 17 months now. She's about to, yeah, she's yeah. about to be 18 months. About to be 18 months. And just as a modern dad, um, mm -hmm. that's something that's like, I, I don't know, I don't want to talk bad about the old generation, but just like you said, it was just check boxes like oh the kids are fed you know they got food on the table roof over their head i'm good like that the dad doesn't really you know maybe that's what guys today are dealing with that they didn't have that emotional connection from their fathers it's not their father's fault they just were in a generation where they weren't focused on that mm -hmm. um so mm -hmm. it's important for dads now like i you know want to be in part of my daughter and my kid's life 100 percent. you know ment mentally and being there for them and playing with them and, you know, helping them with their homework and stuff, even though she's not there yet. But yeah. still, you know, it just, it yeah. just being a dad now, it makes you think like, like, how, like, was this so hard? Like, why couldn't we do this before? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's something that, you know, we love dealing with, but also it's kind of a struggle to think about, like, like, this is what it really is to be a yeah. dad. So how come dads weren't <laughs> like this before? It's just, it's just the time. Yeah, it's the time right? for changing. Yeah. It is. And that's actually the, th the third P, right? The procreator. Back in the day, it was enough that if your wife was like, hey, can we have a kid? You were like, all right, let's do this. Right. <laughs> yeah. There you go, woman. There's your child. Take yes. care of it. Wow. I'll see you later. Right, exactly. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Whereas yeah. now it's really about being a parent. Right. Which is, again, like like you said, why why was it so hard? Well, in some cases, because it was the woman's responsibility, it was the woman's sphere. That was the arrangement. Right. You pay the bills. 
I'll raise the kid. Yeah. So there wasn't really any room for the man at home. Mm. Right? right. But then in some other cases too, it was like, well, you know, can't be bothered with all that mushy gushy nurturing stuff. Yeah. Like oh, gosh, I'll go yes. fix the car. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Which you could do both. I yeah. literally yes. worked on the car and they came and gave, you know, you and our daughter yes. a kiss. Yes. Like you can do both. A hundred percent. But that's also where like having uh, support from other dads is also such an important like dad networks. Oh yeah. Are dad so important. Yep. Yes. Yep. I'm part of one yeah. myself. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been in a while, but yeah, see, that's a good reminder. We need to, need yes. to go back. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh man, this has just been a really great conversation. Um, and your book um is available now. Where can people get your book? Um, it's on Amazon yeah. and it's also on Audible because um, you know, I wrote the book for everybody, but you know, to make it easy to listen to, you know, it's uh on Audible. And yeah, you can also, I mean, I'm a huge fan of local libraries, so you can also request it. If you are a member of a library, you can request it into your library system and they will add it to your local library. Oh, wow. That's, Very convenient. That's great. Yeah. And that's good. It's yeah. on Audible. Um, yeah. And then you sent me a, a version of it and I actually started mm -hmm. reading it and I, you know, had a. A, I'm not a, a much of a reader, but I started yeah. reading. And I had a hard time putting it down. I'm like, wow, this is very interesting. So um, I advise everyone to go out and uh, get it, check it out. Um, do you have anything that you wanted to add? Um, did you have anything else that you wanted to plug? Maybe like any social media or a website? Yeah, or we'll put your like links that? in the bio. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I just, um, I guess I can maybe tell you a little bit about what's coming up next. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> give, us little, give us a little insight. Yes. <laughs> I mean, after writing this book for men, I realized like, oh, I need a companion book for women. So that's going to come at some point too, right? Again, like, how do you be, a, how do we as women be a supportive space for men who are changing and evolving? Because we have our own old ideas, right? About um, like what, men's vulnerability means etc mm. so i think that's going to be important i'll start i'm going to start working on that um and then also my husband and i are going to start doing um couples fun retreats so you know sometimes couples don't play together enough especially when it comes to being parents and you know the grind of life it's like yes. it's tough and so having spaces for parents to get away and just be playful together yeah. Um, for, oh, awesome. you know. I love that. We need that. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, so, that's man. so great. I love that. I can't wait. Well, um, yeah, I'll have to get my hands on that yeah. uh, in the near future, keep... hopefully. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We're definitely, you're, you know, you're welcome back on the show anytime. Maybe yes. when, you, uh, when you got that done, you can feel free to come back and uh, yeah, we'll talk about that yeah. and get more into it. But yeah, this has been so great. And uh, just thank you for everything that you do yes. um, for Modern Man mm -hmm. and Modern Relationships and just everybody, you know, they can, they can, you, you have great advice that everyone can uh, take a piece from. So yeah, thank you again very much. Thank you both for also doing what you're doing. Like oh, this is also okay. so important. Oh, wow. You know? yes, yeah. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yes. As we like to say, they're hitting our music. Yeah. We'll yeah. see you next time. Thank you. Yes, hopefully. Thank you. Like thank you both. Time.